Abrazo, worldwide fans of cinema. This is Jaime in Fuego for In Fuego Tainment, where I am always covering the hottest entertainment with an edge. And this is actually a new format for a film review that I am just kind of testing the waters with, which is a little weird with me being here in the desert where there is absolutely none of it. But I have pushed many a review back in the, uh, well, this is the third season of Fuego Tainment that we were about to properly start once blockbuster season hits. But I have pushed off many a review because of the fact that I have always wanted to have a you know right hand man uh, or lovely lady or whatever it may be just basically somebody to bounce ideas off of here on my channel and unfortunately with scheduling difficulties and things like that it has proved increasingly difficult as time goes by to just cross the streams properly and actually get somebody to sit down here with me and discuss a film proper. Now, I've taken this format of the one-man show for trailer reactions. I have also done it for infoigatorials and, you know, uh, different things like that. And if you've seen me on the horror show, which I've seen more of the audience, like, crossing over from, you've seen me doing this with my Hail to Stephen King that I'm doing every Sunday now. So this is basically going to be me talking about a film that came out this past weekend, preview screenings being Thursday night, um, yeah, you might have even seen this already, but this is a film called Fist Fight that I am just very briefly going to describe by myself. So let's check out some footage about the film real quick first. Why? Are you trying to pick a fight with me, man? These students are shit on this school all day. You think this is funny? I'm going to show you what's funny. You ratted on me. He did it. Now you got to pay the price. Snitches get stitches. S -s -s Snitches and stitches? What are you talking about? Mr. Strickland, reputation of a hothead. Scary yet effective. Kill shot! Am I the only one here who sees what's going on? Hello? Hello? Not hello you! Hello! He's holding an axe! So here in Fuego Team and I always like to talk a little bueno, malo, and feo. And so with just me discussing things here, it's going to be much, much more brief. So this, as you probably saw from the trailers, is about a little scuffle that escalates into something insane between Charlie Day and Ice Cube. And so based on premise, you're probably thinking, holy shizzle, this is going to be insanely hilarious, so awesome. And it has its moments where it's basically that uh, if you're going to ask an old fogey like me, what I could most uh, most describe it as. It's basically High School High, which was a parody of Dangerous Minds that had John Lovitz and oh, Miss Tia Carrer, who you probably saw in Wayne's World if you've watched that old-ass film as well, which is now 25 years old. Oh my goodness. But yeah, basically it's High School High for the 21 Jump Street remake generation? Yeah, that's the best way I could describe it. So, uh, based on a misunderstanding between the mild-mannered Charlie day and the totally BA and borderline insane ice cube, you are going to have a insane throwdown and, uh, you know, mix in some WWF or excuse me, WWE as we're going to uh, properly classify them as that's where you basically have the formula for this film. And so if I was going to go into Bueno, I would definitely say Charlie Day. This is his first time trying to shoulder a film all by himself. I have loved him since the Sunny Delphia days and he's still on there, still doing great. Uh, he was amusing enough in Horrible Bosses and, you know, he had like a smirk or two while playing it a little straighter in Pacific Rim, but this is his first opportunity to, you know, shine and I guess like lead a film of sorts, which is kind of crazy. Directed by Richie Keen, who doesn't really do that terrible of a job or anything, you know, serviceable enough. He had his entire background in television, which is, you know, stuff like uh, the, that Goldberg show that takes place in the 80s and obviously tons and tons of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episodes. And so um, Charlie Day brings a lot of warmth, a lot of heart. If I was going to knock on a second positive bueno good thing about this film, it's the fact that um, there is a family that really seems to care about each other. Yeah, and I, I'm not even saying that in like a peculiar fashion. It's just weird for that to be the heart of the film is Charlie Day just really hoping and wanting the best for his family and not wanting to lose his job. And so that's why some of the silly things that, that transpire in this film actually go the way that they do. Now to go malo to do the bad stuff and just really focus quickly upon that, it's a real one note script in the fact that not much else really happens, you know, besides the oncoming confrontation and all the little bits that they 
kind of string along aside from that. They're just lame. They, they feel like they're really trying to stretch out what could easily be an episode of Sunny Philadelphia. Like, imagine if Charlie was, for whatever reason, going to be a substitute teacher at a high school in Philadelphia, and they stretch that to 90 minutes. So basically, three episodes. And so they're, they're, they're searching for laughs. Um, and they're really searching for laughs, especially with the supporting cast, because Ice Cube, despite the insane idiocy of most of his decision making and the ridiculous and, and like ridiculous silliness of it, um, I guess it kind of fits in with you know just the stupidity of uh, and the like not based in reality of this school. You know, like hacking stuff apart with axes in the classroom with children there and how insanely redonk it is. But the two women, especially Christina Hendricks and Jillian Bell. They're really, really bad in this. And that's not to say that the women are bad necessarily. It's just that the material that is given to them is so cliched, so dumb. I mean, it doesn't really give them any room to do anything in this film. And they come off as two of the worst, worst characters in this. I mean, even the, uh, the, the security guard who has maybe three lines in it is more memorable than anything that those two women have to say, which is a damn shame because, um, you know, Mad Men, Hendrix was great on, um, and I can't say I've seen Belle in as many things. I mean, she was the overbearing, like, hot and bothered uh, sister in Goosebumps, which uh, that's a horror show review you guys can probably watch and laugh at. But, yeah, the supporting cast was just really, really lackluster and unmemorable, unfortunately. And if I'm gonna go into the ugly here as the final bit of the trio, it's gotta be the fact that we hadn't seen Tracy Morgan in a movie since 2014, and uh, god damn, it's so good to see him back. He has a few really funny lines. It makes me wonder if they were improvised, like ad-libbed, you know? There is one where he's like, you see Biscuit? You just go right away? You go right away like see Biscuit? You know, that just killed me. He has been one of my favorite comedians for years and years, stretching all the way back to the Saturday Night Live stuff. He was one of the best parts of Cop Out. He's been in, you know, just handfuls of amazing things. And after his tragic accident, that's the ugly part that I want to mention first and foremost is that it's really just ugly sad that he hadn't been actively working, you know, because of everything that happened in his recovery and the passing of his friend. And so that's going to be our somber moment here in a movie where there is not a single somber moment in it. It is just insane, just idiocy throughout. But if there's one other bit of ugliness that I want to mention, and this may be a mild spoiler, but there's a particular musical entry, a uh, little rendition that comes near the end of the film. Wow, is it terrible. It has a little girl swearing her ass off, and it is just so... Hey, maybe you would think it's funny. I definitely chuckled a little bit at it, but it takes a popular song and just turns it on its head, and it's so... Uh, it just doesn't fit. It's not even funny. It's, it's borderline offensive, and that's the thing. Sometimes you can be offensive and funny and poignant and it all correlates together and even if it's going to turn heads it still it still makes sense and it's still worthwhile and serves a purpose i don't really feel like this scene really did so if you've seen the movie and you're watching this afterwards that's not really a super spoiler for any who haven't but nonetheless you guys know the scene that i'm talking about and wow right so in any event I've been Jaime Fuego, ex in the Grande Gracias for this new rapid fire review. I, I, I might call it um, Fuego Rapido. That's what I'm kind of contemplating. So, hashtag Fuego Rapido film review. I've been Jaime Fuego. You can find me on all social media sectors Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and here on YouTube. So, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be upping the prevalence and the frequency of these reviews once again and these bits of film coverage. I am aspiring towards bringing back something that I did a little test run with previously, which is called The Nightly Nerd, which is basically going to be me sitting down for about 10 minutes and talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of the nerdtastic news of the day. Also, The Geek and Rewind, which is another thing that I've wanted to do for a while, and that's the one that cannot be just me. The Geek and Rewind has to be just a few other peers here in the industry that I love and respect. 
Cecil Laird, Luis Hernandez, peeps that you have seen me talk this nerdtastic stuff with before. I really want to do a full on nerd round table on the weekends and then have me covering stuff for you guys daily. So once again, thank you so very much. In the words of Pac, you are appreciated. And until next time, hasta luego, sin amigos. But I am hopeful that it is going to be sooner rather than later. Peace out.